This video is for the revision of stoichiometry. So we're going to cover um, calculations could be related to concentration, empirical formula, molecular formula, percentage of yield or purity. Okay, in exams, um, you might get questions that gives you information about mass, number of particles, volume, or even concentration. All of these needs to be converted to number of moles first uh, before you can use the stoichiometric equation to find out what is the percentage of yield or purity or what's the volume of products. So everything needs to be converted to number of moles first. To convert number of moles to mass, we need to multiply the AR or the MR. And to convert mass to number of moles, we divide the AR or MR. From number of moles to number of atoms, molecules or particles, we multiply the Avogadro constant. And to go back, we divide. From number of moles to the volume of gas, we multiply 24 dm cubed. And to go uh, back from volume to number of moles, that's dividing 24 dm cubed. Uh, this is equivalent to 24,000 centimeter cubed. Let's discuss this calculation. Calcium chlorate um, is made by reacting calcium hydroxide with chlorine gas. Let's balance this equation first. So we see hydrogen here. We don't see hydrogen anywhere else. So hydrogen must have came to the water. We'll balance that one first. There's six times two hydrogen. So there's 12 hydrogen atoms. So here there should be 12 as well. So six. Next, let's balance the oxygen since there's oxygen here and here, and this is the only place where the oxygen atoms came from. So there's six times two um, oxygen atoms from here that makes 12 pieces of oxygen atoms. There's already six here, and this one there's six, so there must be only one of these. So six plus six would be 12. Now that we've settled the hydrogen and oxygen, um, now we can settle the calcium. There's six pieces here. There's one here, so there must be five here. Let's check the chlorine. Chlorine started off with um, six times two, so there's 12 pieces of chlorine here. And one of this would have two chlorines, so two pieces here, and five times two, so there's 10 pieces of chlorine here, so I do get 12, so this is balanced. Let's look at this question, 8.88 grams of calcium hydroxide, so they gave us, gave us the information in grams, the mass, and 7200 centimeter cubes of chlorine, so that's in volume, are mixed together, how many moles is 8.88 grams of calcium hydroxide? First, we will need its MR. So CA is 40, O 16, and H is 1. Okay, so mass over AR or MR is number of moles. We need that number of moles. So 8.88 divide 74. That's 0 0.12. Next, let's get the moles of chlorine gas. So 7200 centimeter cubes. So starting from here, 
if we need to go back to number of moles, we'll need to divide two, four, zero, zero, zero. Then we'll get 0 0.3 moles. Next, looking at this equation, six calcium hydroxide is to six chlorine gas. But right now I have 0 0.12 to 0 0.3. So obviously this 0 0.3 is too much in excess. Only 0 0.12 will react. Because as we can see here, the ratio is six is to six, meaning one is to one. So 0 0.12 is to 0 0.12. So the rest will the rest of the chlorine won't react. So to know the maximum number of moles of calcium chlorate that can be made from this 8.88 grams of calcium hydroxide and 7200 centimeter cubes of chlorine gas, we will need the limiting reagents. That will be the number of moles that we need to refer to over here. Okay, so this six is to one here. So I'm gonna write six is to one. So 0 0.12 is to how much? So my working should be 0 0.12 divide six times one. I'll get 0 0.02 moles. Next, what is the maximum mass? So from this mole, let's convert it back to mass. Okay, I need to calculate the MR for this. So this is calcium, two of chlorine, and three oxygens here. I got 207. So bring this down to 0 0.02 times 207, and I'm going to get 4.14 grams. Next is a revision for um, calculations that involves concentration, M. So use the formula MV per thousand, uh, where V is the volume in centimeter cubes. And that's the reason why we put the 1000 here, um, because this is in mole per dm cube. This M here is in mole per dm cube. And if this is in centimeter cubes, we need to change it to dm cube so that we can cut this off and that will be equal to moles. Now in a titration, there's the conical flask and the period here. A student added 25 centimeter cubes of NaOH, so 25 centimeter cubes of a 0 0.2 mole per dm cube and AOH into the conical flask and add some methyl orange indicator and then uh, dilute sulfuric acid, so H2SO4 was run from the burette. The volume of dilute sulfuric acid needed to neutralize was 20 centimeter cubes. Okay, that's the information that we got. And there's a balanced equation here for us. Calculate the number of moles of aqueous sodium hydroxide that we put into this uh, conical flask. So MV per thousand M V per a thousand, we would get, okay, I'll put it in this standard way. That would be the number of moles that is contained in this 25 centimeter cubes of sodium hydroxide in the conical flask. Next, calculate the number of moles of dilute 
sulfuric acid added from the burette. Uh, we don't know what's the concentration, but that's fine because we know that the mole is two is to one. So if we have the number of moles of sodium hydroxide here, we can calculate the number of moles that is contained inside this 20 centimeter cubes of sulfuric acid. So what we need to do is just divide two because two is to one. So this is our number of moles of dilute sulfuric acid that is from the burette. Now calculate the concentration of the dilute sulfuric acid. Since we have the mole, we have the volume. So we can use MV per thousand equals the number of moles. So this came from here volume was given and now we are calculating M. So my answer here is 0 0.125 mole per dm cube. Okay, now they want us to convert that to gram per dm cube. So what I'm actually doing here is just converting moles to grams. Dm cube is still there. So ignore the per dm cube, just convert moles to mass. So H here, S O. So H S and O. I got 98 SDMR and multiply by the uh, mole per dm cube here to get gram per dm cube. So that's my answer. Next part, a revision for empirical and molecular formula. So we're gonna use the table again, carbon, hydrogen, and bromine. There's 2.4 grams, 0.4 grams, and 16 grams. Uh, if you're given in percentage, that's fine. You can treat it as mass if the percentage is by mass. So carbon is 12, hydrogen is 1, and bromine is 80. So 12, 1, 80. That will give us the number of moles. So if we were to divide 0 0.2 for all these figures, because it's the smallest figure, and we round it off to the closest whole number, I would get 1 is to 2 is to 1, which means my empirical formula is C. H to ER. Okay, they told us the relative molecular mass is 188. So 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 80. That would make 94. So 188 divide 94, I'll get two. Therefore, um, multiply this by two. That would be my molecular formula. So C2, H4, Er2. Next, a revision on percentage of yield. So you need the actual mass obtained from the question and divide by the calculated mass. So you need to calculate that and get the percentage of that. Okay, so we're going to convert this first. Um, 31 grams of methyl salicylate, which is this product here, is obtained from 50 grams of salicylic acid, which is this C7. H6O3, so I have 50 grams. I need to convert that to moles. And the mole is one is to one, and I have excess methanol. To convert this 50 grams to moles, I have to divide its MR. And then to convert that moles back to mass, I need to multiply the MR for C8H8O3. So I need to calculate um, both the MRs first. So 50 grams divide the MR of C7H6O3, multiply the MR for 
C eight H eight O three. That gives me fifty five grams. So put that fifty five grams here. Multiply one hundred, and that is my percentage. Similarly, percentage of purity. So I have 50 grams of impure sample here. So that sample is not all copper carbonate. Some of it is some impurities. I've broken down by heat and it formed 6 dm cubes of carbon dioxide. So calculate the mass of pure uh, copper carbonate in the sample and then the percentage of purity. So first step, we need to convert that 6 dm cubes to moles first. So my number of moles is 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Since this is one is to one is to one. So I know that I also have 0 0.25 copper carbonate since I have 0 0.25 of carbon dioxide. So I put that here. So you'll need to calculate the MR for CuCO3. I got one to four. And so 31 grams of copper carbonate. So 31 grams of copper carbonate is pure. We have 50 grams of the impure copper carbonate. So my purity is 62%.